So we've all seen movies, right? We all want our brick films to look like movies, right? Why not? A lot of brick films, though, just use a lot of available light, natural light. And it works, but the thing is, it may not look like a movie. And so, why not light it like a movie? So, that's what I'm going to talk about, is lighting a brick film like a movie. Now, we've all seen lights like these before, right? Yeah, well, if you worked in movies, then you know what this is. This is a baby baby. And when you turn this on, whoa, that is one bright light. This is one of the smallest lights that you could get in your arsenal if you're a DP. Now, the reason why these are so bright and why they can get so hot, I'm going to turn it off, is because film has a really low ISO. For many, many years it was really low. We're talking like 50 to 64 ISO. It has soon come, come around and anybody who's taking photos with film know that you need a lot of light. So the thing is though, there's a reason why we don't use that much light. And here's why. When you turn it on, BAM! So instead of using those big lights, we're going to use lights like this. Just standard desk lamps. Basically, you just want to find any light you can. Like this one, for instance, I found on my mom's grand piano. You want to take out any bulbs that aren't really going to work well for you and put in the ones that do. Here's a 40 watt bulb. Should be a good key light. This one has kind of a long one so it, it would make for a good fill light or a backlight. Now the problem that you have with this is now you've got a whole bunch of plugs. The best way to handle all these plugs is to get your standard power strip. These are common at any store. So now you want to check all your lights. Okay. Without going into too much detail, we're just going to look at the standard three-point lighting setup. This is where you have a key light, which is a main light, and then you have a backlight, which gives a nice edge and kind of fills up the rest of the scene. And then you have a fill light, and we will talk about how we'll get this later. Okay, so what you want to do is then you turn on your key light, and there it is. Now, this is what we call the motivated light. So whatever you have in your scene, this light should be the motivator. This is the main light. And you see how it has a nice hard edge on it? The great thing about desk lamps is that you can adjust their height. The only problem is sometimes they'll just fall on you and they're a little hard to deal with. So you just gotta be creative. Okay, now what we wanna do is once we have that side is we want to put in a backlight we turn this on and there we have it a nice edge on his back right there that's kind of putting a little more light on him and it depends on the way the room looks you know if the room has if the room is bouncing light from the key light then that would make sense or if there's another or if there is another light coming from behind. Now, see how there's a lot of shadow right here on kind of the middle and that looks kind of ugly. I don't know if I like that. So what I'm going to do is use this. Now all you need here is just a piece of paper folded up, see? You just take a piece of paper fold it up so it makes a nice triangle so you can set it right there, see? And I'm going to place it to the side and when I do that, look at that it just brings it back up. Now this is out, okay, this is in. See? Out, in. Because what I want to do is have the light bounce off and hit our little Lego guy. See? Nice. And all you had, and all you needed was a little piece of paper. 